Hey guys, this is Navin here. Welcome back to Navin Automation Lab. So today I got one question on, someone asked me this question on LinkedIn, that hi Navin, I'm facing one technical challenge. Your suggestion will be great help. I have a list of more than 600 URLs or maybe some sub URLs of one application. I need to check for any broken links present or not for each of them. I think that's pretty simple. Then the thing is, I need to run this in parallel mode as executing then one by one using any loop will take a lot of time as one single URL might take one minute of execution time. Okay, that's good. How can we achieve this in a quicker manner? So broken link is a very common scenario, but the question is that there are 600 URLs are available on a particular page or maybe they, this guy has collected 600 URLs in some XML file or maybe some Excel sheet and then one by one that we have to iterate or maybe that uh, we just collect a complete list and then uh, we check every th all the broken links in the parallel mode or maybe some uh, we can use a stream over here. So according to me, the solution for this is that uh, uh, I'll just go to that application, fetch all the all the URLs like href values. So let's see, for example, I'm using amazon.com. And then I'll be using driver dot find elements by dot tag name a because a is the link. And then I'm checking number of links are available on this. Let's see whatever 300, 400 links are available. That is perfectly fine. Then I'll do one thing that I'll maintain one list of a string here. For example, this is my uh, URL list here. And then one by one, I'll iterate this particular uh, links that that we have captured. Okay, with the help of one for each loop, I'll be applying here. So I'll be writing, this is my element E in this particular list. And then what exactly I'm going to do that I simply write that, okay, fine, E dot, okay, from this E dot get attribute method, I can use it. And we know that each and every link is having that attribute that is href attribute. So I'll capture this particular href attribute and store in a URL variable like that. And then I'll just keep filling this particular list so that end of this for loop. Okay, let me just add all the URLs over here. So end of this uh, loop, I'm having the complete all the 300, 400 URLs in this particular array list. Fine. So this is a standard way that okay, we have to do it. Now I'll iterate this particular list in that way, so that I can check each and every link in the sequence mode or in the parallel mode. So how to apply that? So I'll do one thing, I'll write a separate method over here out of this main method. Let me create one public static uh, void and my method name, let's say I'm going to create, uh, you know, a broken link method. And this method say, okay, fine, you give me the, uh, the link URL. So I'll do one thing, let me start with the try block. Now in this particular try block, that we know that how to find out the broken link, there are so many codes are available on different blocks on my channel also I have already covered. So we will be using the URL class. So I'm going to create the object of URL is equal to new URL. So that logic, I'm just making it separately in a different method like that, a kind of a generic method that I'm creating it and then supply this link URL over here. Okay. And this URL we have to import from where you have to import from Java dot not uh, net package. After that, what you have to do, you have to uh, use this URL you have to use URL dot uh, open connection method that you have to use it. And this open connection method is returning what this is returning URL connection over here. Okay, or there is a super class that is called HTTP URL connection. Also, you can use this because we are going to use HTTP connection here. And let's see, this is my HTTP uh, URL connection reference that I'm going to store it like that. Okay, so this is uh, and then you have to use what let me add cast to HTTP URL connection also over here. Then with the help of this HTTP URL connection, I'll do one thing. I'll just set one uh, connection timeout. So let's see my connection timeout is around uh, 5000 milliseconds that I'm using it. And uh, with the help of this, I'll simply write that. Okay, just connect with this URL. And when you connect with this URL, you simply apply one if condition from this uh, connection. What you do is uh, with this connection, you just get the response code. See, there is a method. Yes, response code. If this response code is greater than or equal to 400. So greater than 400 means 
a 400 is a bad request and let's see 500 internal error 501 502 505 401 if you are getting greater than 400 it means that's a bad url or that's a broken url for 300 it's a it's a positive url and for 200 also it's a correct url so if it is greater than 400 greater than or equal to 400 i'll print a message over here the system dot our print ln whatever the link url that you are passing here so i'll be writing this link url and uh, I'll just append with the message over here like this. Okay. And uh, whatever the message that you are getting it. So I'll be using this connection once again. There is one more method that you can use it that uh, get response message. And then I'll be appending saying that is a, a broken link. Okay. This is the standard code that we find. Okay. Use it for the. A broken link okay and then after that I'll put one else over here and then I'm going to fetch and print the response code whatever the response code that I'm getting it so I'll do one thing that uh, I'll be writing system dot out of print ln I'll just append with this I'll say okay this is the plus and uh, this is my HTTP URL connection dot uh, get response a message that I'll be printing it over here if it is not broken okay so i'll do one thing let's uh, try this and let's see it is actually working or not uh let's call this particular method check broken link method somewhere over here so see i'm just uh, passing this whatever the uh, url uh, that you are uh, using it so before i'll do one thing before creating a list over here just let me comment it out i'll just pass this url whatever the url i've captured and passing it to this guy Right, so I'm calling this method, check broken URL. One by one, you fetch href value in this string URL and give it to this guy. And then keep checking that what is happening or not. Okay, and then uh, let's see it is working or not. So I'm using it on Amazon. And I'm pretty much sure on Amazon, there are multiple broken links are there. Okay, so let's come over here. You can see there are 280 links and then see this is awesome. It's saying service available is a broken link and then, then I'm getting response code. Okay, service available is broken link. Then okay, see there are multiple broken links are available on this particular page. Right. So this is a logic. This logic is working fine. So this is a very plain logic. One by one it will check. That is what I'm saying is that uh, you just create a for loop and then pass the URL to this method and this method will keep checking that uh, this is a broken link or not okay but the question is that uh, this guy asked actually what exactly he asked that uh, you have to check in a parallel mode or maybe something uh, in parallel mode as executing them <coughs> one by one using any loop this is what we are using it any loop taking a lot of time because one single url might take one minute execution time obviously if there are 600 urls are there 600 uh, minutes it might take right so what exactly we can do that's why i'm creating this list i'll just keep adding this and remove this method from here i don't want to call this method like that so just fill this particular error list and then you, what you do you simply apply dot a parallel stream over here right in this parallel stream it will open the multiple streams and then i'll be using a for each use with a lambda and supply each and every element to this method so i'll be calling this method now over here okay and then pass what i'll be passing e over here and this e is representing what this e is representing this url list so whatever list that you are getting it each and every element will be given to this e and then we will supply the urls element to this method over here perfect and then let's see how much time it is taking it so i'll do one thing i'll just create one long variable here this is my start time, which is equal to a uh, system dot current time in milliseconds. And then I'll capture one, one more variable. This is my end time. So this is end time. And then I'll be writing one system dot out print ln. I'll write total time taken. What append with uh, end time minus start time. Make sense so we will get to know that when we start the list iteration and when we end the list iteration and then let's see how much time it took 
okay so obviously guys this is the list either you store advance in advance in some excel sheet or or in some xml and then from there you capture and then create a list so ultimately you have to create a list that is what i'm doing in my for loop over here i'm storing each and every href value in this particular uh, url and keep adding this url in this particular array list and then i'm applying the parallel stream over here so let's run it and let's see it is really improving the time or not so let's or you can run in the headless mode also that is fine but uh, see the console there are 280 links are available on the page and see it's very fast awesome as compared to the previous one and uh, let's see how much time it took this is absolutely working fine each and every links are getting che uh, checked and uh, see it took around 18 second 18,433 it means around uh, 18.4 seconds it took okay so I'll do one thing <coughs> with parallel stream it took around 18 seconds right I'll say 18.4 seconds now if you apply the same logic with a normal for loop or with the normal stream so with the sequential stream if you are using it this is a Java 8 feature you simply apply a stream it means one by one you check each and every element this is just like a normal typical for loop i'm checking it so let's run it and let's see how much time used by a sequential stream i'm pretty much sure it will take a lot of time okay so amazon is getting open and then again 280 links are available and then you see this each and every link will be checked one by one it's a sequential execution now you can imagine it will take a lot of time for 280 or 600 or 500 links are available on that page okay so let's uh, wait and let's see how much time it is taking it okay see so finally it is uh, done and then here you can see that it is taking around 159 seconds that is too much obviously right so uh, here you can see the clear comparison with the sequential stream if i'm using it a sequence a normal stream if i'm using it the total time taken by around 159.2 seconds you can see that so i'll write it over here 159.2 uh, seconds or 159 seconds actually and then you can see the comparison there are a lot of time you can save it over here instead of checking it manually uh, sorry checking it uh, one by one in the sequential order or better you use a proper use case of parallel stream here okay so let's apply the parallel stream once again how much time it is taking the next time so earlier it was taking 18.4 let's run it again so application got launched again 280 links are available and you can see on the console that it is very fast because all the links are getting checked in the parallel mode and uh, here let's see how much time it is taking so drastically you can improve the time and the performance of your script here so here let's see almost done this time it took around 19.9 seconds okay which is still better i mean far far better than your 159 seconds so here it is taking next time it is taking around 19 19 seconds around okay guys so this is a very good example of the sequence stream and the parallel stream okay these two features are coming from java 8 and the ultimate target is what you have to maintain your list either the, you maintaining this list from the uh, list of web elements and then fetching the href value that is also you can do that i think that's a better approach do not store your uh, links already in some excel sheet or xml sheet what if some links are expired or not at all available on the page itself so in that case you should always check uh, dynamically whatever the links are available at the current state you fetch them store in a particular list of web element and then iterate it store in a list of a string and then one by one uh, you supply and then call this particular function with the help of a parallel stream like that which will drastically will improve this thing improve the time that is very important so that's all for this i think for this particular video i hope uh, uh, this question is clear now and such a nice question that's a good one but easy one and uh, this is what you can do a case study like that by doing the end time minus the start time over here okay so if you have any kind of questions like this, you can put a comment and then you can uh, mail me or just uh, tag me somewhere on LinkedIn or somewhere. I'll try to solve that question for you guys. Thank you so much, guys.